Quick little tip for you. If your eyes are downturned, don't go to the end of the lash line. And we're back with another educational beauty video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create an eyeshadow look like a pro, and it's a bronze look. I really do hope you love this look. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorites, and it's so easy to do. And I'm also gonna be showing you how to mix different textures together. So this one is really great if you are a little bit confused about creams or gel or powder eyeshadows. I think it's gonna be amazing for you. You're gonna absolutely love it, and you're, you're gonna be really shocked at how easy this actually is. So before we head into the video, if you do like this video please do give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos and i'm over on instagram so come say hi there too now let's jump straight into the video you guys seem to love these videos so i'm really excited about this look today it's a look that i personally would wear kind of anywhere and i feel like you probably would do as well if you knew how to do it i'm going to go through that now with you i've got everything on my face so my foundation is done everything is done apart from my eyelids there's nothing done on there i have no concealer no eye primer nothing so this is a look which i feel like is going to be pretty easy for you but also obviously i'm going to break it down and it's something that i think looks really professional in terms of like it looks like a pro's done it and i feel like it just looks stunning so and i feel like it's pretty easy for you guys to do too because the textures work really well with one another let's get started i am going to start with applying a little bit of concealer if you guys didn't already know from watching some of my videos and maybe you're new here i don't use eye primer i just feel like it's can it can i will go into that another day but i just feel like it doesn't work for me and i feel like concealer works way better so i don't have a problem with creasing when i'm using concealer or anything like that now i'm going to use my Too faced born this way multi sculpting concealer in warm beige and all i'm doing i'm I, because i have nothing on my eyes and you can see that it's a little bit patchy it looks a bit dark because that's just my darkness on my eyelids so i'm i'm literally gonna apply honestly three little dots there right i don't want to cover my entire lid and i don't need a lot of concealer there now i'm gonna get my real techniques sponge and um, what i'm gonna do is i'm basically using the tip of the sponge and i'm just kind of like pressing and i'm making i don't want to like totally ruin my brows i'm just going to kind of kind of go into my brows a little bit but not all the way on top of the product i'm more focused on getting this concealer up along this brow bone area i'm not so concerned about covering the actual lid it's kind of naturally spread there anyway like see how quickly that has like transformed the eyelid like there's no darkness there it's nice and clean so and it was a very easy kind of technique it's not anything that's too difficult i'm literally just kind of like gliding it over as i'm buffing so it's not dry over the skin whatsoever it's just buffing and when I say buffing it's bouncing bouncing buffing whatever you want to call it now that has kind of covered up that eyelid for me so now we've got this really nice clean base that is the base ready next up I'm going to get a setting powder you can use any kind of set setting powder now what I'm going to do is get my real techniques brush I've got a tiny bit of powder on the palm of my hand and I'm just kind of grabbing that powder and I'm just going to kind of like go over the brow bone I'm not even going over the lid I'm just going over the brow bone because we're going to be using a cream eyeshadow so I'm not too fussed about really mattifying that entire lid I'm just focused on the kind of brow bone area because it's kind of opened it up for us now okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my cream eyeshadow from Charlotte Tilbury it's the eyes to mesmerize cream eyeshadow in Betty all I'm doing is I'm just going to get a little bit out with my neck no, like this is this is my personal stuff so I can use it however I wish I, I, you use it however you wish so like my personal makeup is not mixed with my client makeup there's total separate room for that so this i'm just going to grab hold of a little bit of this on my nail you can use whatever you want i'm going to put that on the back of my hand so it's just kind of like laying on the back of my hand there i do have a brush ready this is my nyx 16 brush that's ready to kind of go into my crease now i'm going to get my finger and all i've done is i've just gone like this over the cream and it's on my finger so now what i'm going to do is i am going to basically press this onto my lid and all i'm aiming for is just to kind of like cover the actual eyelid i'm not fussed about the blending i'm not fussed about getting it anywhere else i'm just putting it all over the lid and when i say all over the lid i mean basically within the socket area so from the inner corner to the outer corner up into the socket but not necessarily above so it kind of creates like a semicircle. and we're going to do the same on this eye 
you can see I'm literally just pressing it on. I'm not too fussed about how neat it is. Don't worry about trying to get a perfect semicircle. So now that we've got that there, I'm gonna take this brush, there's nothing on this brush, and all I'm doing is just kind of like going back and forth in a semicircle kind of shape. If you feel that you have a lot of excess skin there and it's difficult for you to drag because it kind of like leaves gaps out, you know when the skin just snaps back into shape and then you're like, okay, now there's like all these weird gaps. Hopefully you get what I'm saying, but I am trying to say I get you. All you need to do is just buff then. If you find that dragging is too difficult because of excess skin or just generally loose skin around that area, buff. But it does help to raise your eyebrows because it stretches the skin so it's easier for you to drag. Now, so I'm gonna show you how to drag. Drag is like that. So we're going basically back and forth like this. So what we wanna do is we wanna buff now and that's just me showing you a different technique so you can figure out what works better for you. But all we've done is we've basically, when we're dragging, we're just like dragging from the, the edges of the shape that we created. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna buff because I want you to understand that too and then you can figure out what works for you. So this is where we're still stretching the lid and this is where I'm just kind of like pressing pressing in a very light flick, press, light flick, press, light flick. And then what we do is I basically press and flick inwards because I don't want it to go too high. But then when I get here, I want it to kind of like go out a little bit. So what I do is I press and flick out. So you're flicking towards the direction that you want that blending to go. I personally do find that this is kind of like much easier for you if you don't have much experience in makeup. Like I feel like it's just an easy way of explaining how to blend. So obviously you do it a lot faster and then, then you, you know, it's quicker for you. So I feel like that's gonna like giving me a really nice sheen there. I do feel like I could probably layer it up or maybe add a bit of darkness there, but now we've got that kind of like cream base there. We can layer up whatever powder eyeshadows we want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same here. I'm kind of like combining a little bit of the dragging and buffing together. I'm just gonna layer up a little bit more here. And then before I do the other eye, I'm just gonna like do that same blending here. So I'll just buff this. So I'm just buffing and flicking all at the same time. And then just like going really quick with my movements and that's it. So we'll do the same on the other eye, put a bit more product there inwards. So my buffing and flicking is in here. And then when I get here, my buffing and flicking is outwards towards the area that I want it to kind of like be lifted or, you know, where it's going. Now I feel like that's a good base. Now the reason I'm using cream eyeshadow here is because I feel like it almost like acts as my primer and my base color in one because it's like a cream texture. So any eyeshadow like powder that I apply sticks to it really well and it just enhances that color a bit more. So the cream eyeshadow helps to enhance the eyeshadow that I apply on top. But I'm not covering this cream eyeshadow. I still want this as my base but what I want is to add a little bit of more kind of like depth to it okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my Sigma E30 brush and I'm just kind of like dipping it into this cream eyeshadow what I want to do is just basically go back and forth into my lower lashes so you can see here I'm just going very small movements into my lower lashes if you focus on going into your lower lashes you won't have to worry so much about placement because at least you know you know where your lower lashes are and that gives the right amount of kind of like gradient which kind of like slowly fades out into the skin i don't want it to look totally bare on the under eye but i also don't want to be applying too much of this product so i just want just something there so it doesn't look so kind of bare we're gonna do the same here now I feel like it's kind of like it's even this you could just put mascara on and you're done it's quite a nice natural kind of bronzy eye so I really wanted to kind of I wanted to tell you step by step where you could potentially stop and just add some mascara or lashes and you're done like there's so many different looks that you can create out of one look so like it just depends where you decide to stop and where you decide to carry on to kind of enhance it or give it a different type of look Ah, that was cold, my teeth. Right, so I'm gonna apply a little bit of a kind of like bronzy shade on my lid, a powder eyeshadow. I'm using my Morphe Jaclyn Hill Divine Neutrals palette. And the color that I'm gonna start with first is Strip Tease. And it's like this really nice, rich, chocolatey brown bronze color. So I've got it on my finger here, right? And now what I'm gonna do, press it on the outer corner there. Just, I've just pressed a little bit there. Don't worry about trying to spread it out or anything. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back in with that NYX brush and I'm basically gonna buff and flick inwards. I 
Okay, see how that's like kind of like blended in now from that buffing and flicking? Now what you can do is keep adding it to give it more definition there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more there. Just pressed it along there. Now what I'm gonna do is get this brush, I'm gonna buff and flick, but now what I'm doing is buffing and flicking upwards and outwards because what I'm trying to go for, this is all about what you know you want to create, right? So you've got to have an image or visually understand what it is you're trying to create. So what I want to do is I want it to kind of like come upwards and outwards there so that it kind of gives me a really nice lifted feline look, but it's slightly kind of darker on the ends, which is we've got that darkness there from this dark bronze color. But now what I'm doing is kind of like fading it out with my buffing and flicking. I'm happy with that. Like we've got a decent amount of darkness there. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and do the same on the other eye. So I just pressed there, right? So when I press, I press and I very lightly, lightly move my finger away. I'm not just tapping. So you've got to make sure you obviously transfer that color over. Get this brush, press and like buff and flick inwards. I'm doing it inwards first so that it just blends in. We get that base there. That's right. Now we're going to go in did it again and now we're going to buff and flick upwards and outwards because now we're taking it in the direction we want it. Now I'm going to get my finger and I'm going to go into the shade Dripping which is from the same palette and now what I'm going to do is just press it the same way I did before but in the center. So center the lid and what this is going to do is just almost give me that kind of really nice dimension so that everything doesn't look so dark. Now what I'm gonna do is just use my same finger, that same finger to just basically, now I'm gonna tap it around, but just around that area because I don't need to blend so much with that because it's quite close to the base color. So what I'm doing is just kind of like lightly patting so that I've got this really nice kind of like bright bronze on the center of the lid. It helps to open up the eye and the dark bronze is on the outer corner. And then you can obviously see the base color in between all of that. So at this point, again, you could put some mascara on, put some lashes on and you're done. So that's another look. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the next step. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. We're gonna be using a gel, a black gel. We're gonna be using the MAC Fluid Line in Black Track. And I'm using my Makeup Forever 258 brush. It's a really nice kind of like thin, kind of small eyeliner brush, but it's not a super thin brush. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting some of this kind of like gel onto the brush, just painting it onto the brush a little bit. Don't overcoat the brush because then you're gonna have too much product there. It's always better to build up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically go super close to the lash line all the way across. And we're gonna get slightly thicker as we do it, if we need to do it, right? But the first one is gonna be really thin. So can you see I'm using the tip and I'm basically almost tight lining. I'm trying to go as close to the lash, almost like in the lash, right? Like in between the lash, in between the lashes. That didn't make sense, in between the lash. So I'm just kind of like pressing. I'm not painting all the way across. I'm using the tip to just kind of almost like dot along. It's so like we're just, I'm pressing it here. You can see it's just, just very lightly pressing it. I get to the end of the lash line and I'm done. Quick little tip for you. If your eyes are downturned, don't go to the end of the lash line. So always go a little bit, like stop a little bit earlier because if your eyes are already downturned and that's an issue for you and you feel like, why do I always look like I have droopy eyes? Don't utilize the end part of your lash line. Honestly, leave it out and let's pretend that your lash line is a little bit earlier on, like it finishes a little bit earlier on and that way you're kind of giving the illusion of more lifted eyes. So that's a nice little tip for you. Do not follow your natural lash line at the end if it is droopy or downturned, if that's an issue for you. I feel like we've tight lined it really nicely Again, you don't have to be precise as long as it's, if you know you're gonna be building up on it, you don't have to be so perfect with your like, you don't have to try and focus on getting it perfect, but we've tight lined it so you can see that that's got a nice kind of like, it's really an, defined on that area. That lash line is really nicely defined. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a, a Q-tip. Some people call it cotton bud, some people call it Q-tip. What's your way? What, what do you call it? Put, let me know in the comments below. I call it, I think it's like, in, I think I was a cotton bud and now I'm transitioning to Q-tip because I don't like cotton bud. It's really weird, but anyway. Grab one of those. We're gonna get that ready in our other hand. Now I'm dipping back into this black again. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. So that's our base that we've done. That's probably like dried up now. Now what I'm gonna do is start from here, the outer corner. And remember if you have downturned eyes, you don't start from the end of your lash line. Start from wherever you stopped this first line that you drew. So okay, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna press. Right, I'm gonna do just a few dots here, make it a bit thicker, so go a little bit higher. I'm gonna grab my Q-tip and I'm gonna press and flick inwards. 
or to the side a little bit like as in to one side you don't need to kind of like go in one direction i would always suggest going either to the side or inwards if you are worried about it spreading too far but if you think you've got kind of a hold of how far you're going then you can go outwards as well so i'm just going to keep kind of like doing that and i'm kind of like drawing the dots a little bit kind of higher and almost like slightly above the lash line so that when i start blending it gives me more of a lifted look so i'm just pressing so like buffing and flicking again and this is where you can even create a little bit of a flick with the way your direction of where you flick out from your q-tip because that can create a soft flick for you so you don't have to actually draw it in and then soften it you can actually just create that flick with the flick <laughs> you know if you see what i mean hopefully that's not too confusing so i didn't actually draw the flick there all i've done is got a little bit higher than my lash line and then what i'm doing is i'm flicking in a little bit and then I'm flicking out, like buffing and flicking. And that's creating a bit of a kind of lift there, you can see, slowly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way in, so like, go to the next section there. But I'm not going as far out as I have done on the end part of my eye, because I want it to kind of go closer and closer to the lash line as I work my way in. Just a couple of dots there. I always find it's much safer to flick in, or like almost diagonally, because I feel like then you're not creating this weird shape you're kind of like you, you're in more control of where your shape is going especially when you get to the inner corner i feel like you don't want to go far out you want to keep it quite close and you want to flick like buff and flick inwards so i'm happy with that i like to kind of just press on the inner corner so it really takes it down a little bit you know like it gives you more of that almost like that siren eye look but without it being so perfectly precise it's a bit more kind of buffed in okay now that we've gone all the way across you can see that's got a really nice soft smoky look there now what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a couple of dots there so it's a little bit higher near the end of the lash line and this is where i'm gonna buff and flick out because that's where i want this kind of like look to go i want it to kind of like flick upwards and outwards a little bit but i don't want it to look like i've drawn eyeliner there so i'm just gradually building it up and slowly you'll see that it will just look like it's faded out upwards and outwards without it looking like there's an obvious flick there so we've got a really nice upwards kind of like, it just looks really nice, I like that. Now that that's done, we're gonna go to the other side and remember how we just kind of like slowly pressed in between the lashes. So we're just tight lining here. And I'm only using the tip. And this is why this brush shape is perfect. And you can change your Q-tip if you want to, if you feel that that makes it easier for you. I'm just using the same one. Okay, now we can go a little bit higher with these dots here, press and flick inwards or outwards wherever you want that kind of like that darkness to really fade into now i'm flicking outwards so i'm pressing and flicking out okay now what i'm going to do is whatever's left on this q-tip i'm basically going to just press it in between my lower lashes but just on this like outer part of the eye i'm pressing and flicking again but into my lower lashes and this is just going to give me a little bit of definition it's honestly all you need you don't need to keep dipping into products because that can be a bit too much i have literally used the same q-tip i have not even used the other side that's what i've used throughout this whole thing now at this point what you could do is just put your lashes on or put some mascara on and you're done or you can make that black kind of a little bit more kind of dramatic if you want with a kind of like powder eyeshadow i'm only going to add a very small amount because i don't actually want to make it any more dramatic than it already is so what i'm going to do rather than using a brush i'm going to use this q-tip again i'm going to just kind of like swirl it over the black eyeshadow this is my mac carbon eyeshadow by the way i feel like if you use a brush it can kind of go everywhere so all i'm doing is basically just pressing right into my lashes right into the lashes i'm not focusing on creating shape all i'm doing is actually just deepening that darkness which is right where those where my lashes come from like the root of the lash now i am just going to curl my lashes i don't think i want to wear false lashes with this so i'm literally just going to apply some mascara because i feel like i i don't really want to wear lashes today i've got my by redo mascara and i am just gonna literally just apply my mascara from root to end and i don't want a clumpy look that's why i'm using this mascara and just gonna go into my lower lashes 
sometimes I get really excited just thinking about you guys creating this stuff. Like it makes me really happy to know that you could really elevate your makeup game and ultimately that's gonna make you feel good. Like, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If it gives you a little bit of confidence, I think that's great. Who doesn't want a bit of confidence? Who doesn't want to feel good about themselves? Who doesn't want to feel like they look good? Everyone wants to feel that. So I, it makes me so excited knowing that you're gonna go away and you may try this and then it's gonna be like, it looks so good on you that people are telling you and it's just ultimately the end of the day, it makes you happy and that makes me happy. So yeah, I'm really excited about you guys drawing this look. That is basically the look. Like it's so, honestly, it's really easy, especially when you kind of practice it a little bit. I really wanna keep making videos like this that are really in depth because I feel like it breaks it down. All we've done is we focused on the eye area. We didn't do the base, we didn't do anything else. It, oh God, I need to just drop my Oh, no. it, we didn't focus on anything else. We didn't focus on foundation or anything like that. We didn't focus on trying to fit everything together. I feel like it's much easier for you guys to just focus on one thing. And it's generally, I think from teaching so many people back in the day, I feel like that's what I've learned. I feel that that has taught me so much. So I understand that I have taught those students, but that in itself has taught me so much, which is why I'm able to give you such amazing content because actually what it taught me was how everyone is so different, how everyone's kind of like learning ability is different, like how quick they are or how they're not as quick at picking stuff up. Not just that, but I know I am the type of person who has to kind of like read something twice to fully absorb it. I have to watch something twice to then I'll pick up things that I didn't pick up in this, the first time I watched it. So I myself am like that. So that I think that's why I break it down so much. Little rant over, it's not a rant really, it's like kind of an appreciation rant. I am gonna finish the rest of the, my drink off and I'm got some other things that I need to do, some errands that I need to kind of like run today. I really do hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you've seen that. There, you don't have to complicate it with too many brushes. You can use really basic stuff like Q-tips. Working with different textures. I really wanted to work with different textures today so that you can understand how you can bring it all together. Cream eyeshadows don't have to be completely separate to powder eyeshadows. You can use gel in between. So although it may seem a little bit complicated when you kind of like, when you're looking at the different textures that we're working with, I really do hope that you've seen how easy it actually is. I hope you enjoyed this look. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments box below. Don't forget all the products are listed in the description box below too. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.